A tale of two MAGA Republican congressional hearings this week, false accusations, fake whistleblowers, COVID conspiracy theories, and MAGA Republicans showing Hunter Biden's nudes in the committee hearing and in newsletters subsequently sent to constituents. Just when you thought MAGA Republicans could not reach a new low, well, you should have thought better because there is no floor for their fascism plus idiocracy equals Trumpism. The Republican Party is gone. It is now this mutant MAGA eek. And speaking of eek, MAGA Republicans are declaring war on Barbie. That's right. The Barbie movie. Yes. From Little Mermaid to Dr. Seuss, from the green M&M to Mr. Potato Head, all major issues for MAGA Republicans to attack. Now, MAGA Republicans have made a new conspiracy theory that the Barbie movie is spreading communist propaganda from China based on a fake Barbie world map. Sure, MAGA Republicans like Ted Cruz have not even seen the movie and they admit as much, but it's not like MAGA Republicans actually read the bills or look at anything anyway. Facts and reality won't get in the way of distortion and new idiotic conspiracies to try and distract the American people from the Republicans' lack of any actual ideas other than overthrowing our democracy and being cruel for the sake of cruelty. Also, we are on Trump indictment watch More witnesses entered the D.C. grand jury. Special counsel Jack Smith's criminal investigation into Trump's election interference continues. There could be an indictment at any moment. And this week also, two federal rulings against Donald Trump in New York. Trump keeps on losing in court first. Federal Judge Alvin Hellerstein rejected Donald Trump's attempt to try to remove and transfer the criminal case brought by the Manhattan District Attorney in New York State Court to federal court. Judge Hellerstein made a finding that there was substantial evidence that Donald Trump's hush money payment to an adult film star was unlawful and intended to benefit Trump personally. So it no federal purpose to remove it to federal court. And yes, another federal judge in New York, this Judge Lewis Kaplan, denied Donald Trump's request for a new trial in the E. Jean Carroll case. And in a scathing, scathing opinion, admonish Trump for claiming victory in the motion for new trial when the jury found against Donald Trump gave a judgment in favor of E. Jean Carroll for $5 million and found that Donald Trump engaged in sexual assault and defamation. Just think about it. In one week, a federal judge found Trump made unlawful hush money payments to a porn star while his wife just gave birth. And another federal judge agreed with a unanimous jury that Trump is a sexual predator. But for the GOP, No problemo there. Meanwhile, President Biden spoke before a crowd of union workers in Philadelphia to discuss the administration's efforts to create more jobs. Also, economists at Morgan Stanley made a sizable upgrade in American GDP growth based on stronger than expected public investment with the Infrastructure and Jobs Act driving an economic boom. And a recent Quinnipiac poll shows President Biden up in the polls in a head-to-head match with Donald Trump, up more than Biden was up in the 2020 race. But most notably, when you dig through this poll, I found one particular result very important, showing that now 
one of the most important issues, regardless of political affiliation, on the minds of American people is losing our democracy and the need to protect our democracy. This is the Midas Touch podcast, and this is what we've been talking about since we launched this network. And it's showing up in the polls. Not a surprise to all the Midas Mighty out there who have been watching these shows. Brett, Jordy, how are you? Doing well, Ben, and great to see all the Midas Mighty out there. Great to be here with everybody. Yeah, it seems like the polls have finally caught up to what we've been seeing, to the comments that we have seen for, I mean, years now. And it was something that President Biden, frankly, identified before the 2022 midterms, as well as the other Democrats, when the media would continuously mock him for it. Like, ugh, our voters really going to care about this democracy thing. Our voters really going to care. Remember these articles? There were so many think yeah. pieces like Biden stupidly bets on democracy. Like it, it was like every week. And I'm like, what are you, t- what is more important than this? I, I do not understand. What are you missing? And then it turns out this MAGA extremism that we have seen build and build and build was in fact on the minds of voters and threats to our democracy were one of the single most defining issues of 2022. And guess what? They have not gone away because this Republican Party has only become more extreme and more dangerous. And we'll go through all of that today. We are, of course, on Indictment Watch, brothers. Indictment Watch is always a fun time. Time to get a haircut, Brett. You got to say though, I got to get a, the the joke is that literally like every time I get a haircut or have a dentist appointment, that's when indictments typically hit. I regret to inform everybody, I do not have any pressing appointments coming up, <laughs> but we will see. Maybe I'll have to schedule something. But waking up on the West Coast when it is indictment watch and you, even if you wake up at like 5, you got to wake up and be like is he indicted yet? You know, you got to check the phone, check the headlines, see what's going on. See if I have any emergency missed calls from Jordy on the East coast. But so far we are just monitoring. It could be really any time and we'll bring you the updates as we get them. Jordy, great to see you as always. How you doing over there? I'm doing well. And it almost hurt my feelings that you didn't think I would have called you both like incessantly over and over and over again if you guys were still sleeping on the West Coast and this thing drops in the AM here. Uh, I put my phone on a deep do not disturb. Really? Really? Yeah. What if there's an emergency? I I think if you call like enough, like if you call like twice in a row, it will. You go full. You put your phone on full silent when you go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. That's that's like a little sociopathic. I figure if it's an emergency, the person's going to call more than once, right? And and I think it rings in that emergency situation when it reads. But like if someone, you know, you get calls on the East Coast. People don't respect time zones. They start calling, uh, Jordy. <laughs> they start they start calling. Yeah, they're like, what? It's 9 a.m. on the East Coast. And I'm like, dude, it's 6. Like, I'm in bed. What are you doing, man? I would have a panic attack. Big bro, Ben, how you doing? I'm doing good. Democracy doesn't rest. Let's show the contrast right now. And I think... One of the ways to start this episode is by showing two recent statements put out by Donald Trump on two separate recordings. And to me, it just shows at the very top of this lawless MAGA Republican Party that there is no even pretending anymore, right? The statements that are made are that of a violent, authoritarian, threatening violence threatening harm. And this is not exaggeration. I want to show you an interview that Donald Trump just recently gave this week on the Simon Conway show. It's about two days ago from the date of this live recording where Trump says that it would be very dangerous for Jack Smith to put him in jail because of his passionate supporters. In other words, this is a threat directed at Jack Smith the Department of Justice, and our democracy. Play the clip. I know what I'm thinking of could happen if, that, for example, they do say Jack Smith says, okay, I'm going to put Donald Trump in jail. I think it's a very dangerous thing to Mm -hmm. even talk about uh, because we do have a tremendously passionate group of voters, and I mean maybe, you know, maybe 100, 150. I've never seen anything like it. Mm-hmm. Much more passion than they had in 2020 and much more passion than they had in 2016. I think uh, it would be very dangerous. The hallmarks of fascism, 
a big lie within there that there's 150 million. He's referring to 150 million supporters. That's simply not true. And the all of the polling data and the credible polling data suggests that the base is shrinking significantly from where it was even in 2020. And then, of course, the threat, which is and, and Donald Trump is very careful in how he couches it because he's also a coward. But it is a clear threat that he is making that his passionate supporters would uh, engage in some acts that may not be too helpful to people if it doesn't go the way that Donald Trump wants it to go. It's a clear threat of violence. And I guess I'll play for you a clearer threat of violence. And Donald Trump just posted this on his social media platform earlier. And this is from something called MAGA.com. And it says, we aren't afraid of them. And Trump says in this, if you F around with us, if you do something bad to us, we are going to do things to you that have never done before. But before we play it, I mean, I want you to just think about the language. It is the language of an authoritarian, but also that of a petulant third grader. If you do something bad to me, I'm going to do something bad to you. Here, play the clip. If you fuck around with us, if you do something bad to us, we are going to do things to you that have never been done before. If you F around with us, and he says the word, if you F around with us, we are going to do things to you that have never been done before. And for those just listening on audio, it zooms in ominously on Donald Trump's eyes or, you know, zooms out, zooms in, and it is in, it is a threat. Clear and present danger, clear threat, Brett Jordan. And it's such an over-the-top threat as well that it, when you're watching it, when you're listening to it, it feels as if you were watching like a bad James Bond movie and the yep. villain just sent that over to threaten the world that he's going to blow up the entire planet if his demands are not met. And that's really, though, what Donald Trump is doing here. Donald Trump is looking at America and he is saying, I am threatening you. Do not put me into power. Feel my wrath. You dare try to indict me again. You try to arrest me. You try to lock me up. I will tear you down. Thankfully, at this moment in time, the only thing he seems to be tearing down is the Republican Party who wants to take this trip with him, I guess, to jail. I don't know. They they are just <laughs> following him down this rabbit hole of criminality. They are committed. They are virtually all his co-conspirators in this right now and yeah. it is truly disgusting that you could see a video that is so clearly a threat like that and you're not even going to speak out you're not going to say anything that's how much you care about this country it's a disgrace We're right you just reminded you. me right there you just reminded me right there you know it's it, it's like they're playing the republicans this game of fascist poker where they don't actually have a hand to play so they continue to bluff with all this bravado and this culture wars because they don't have anything. And all of a sudden they found themselves pot committed to Trump with no real tangible impacts on how they could actually help people or help this country. And now they're stuck. And it's, and it's, it's, it's to their own effect. They've put themselves in this position. Oh, totally. Totally. You call it fascist poker. I think we could just call it fascism. That's what, what just, they do. I just don't like my analogy. I like doing analogies and metaphors. Like, and things. Well, I mean, like, you know, why cool. does it have to be? People like it. I'm, I like I'm it, but it doesn't guy. have to People be like poker. It. it could just be, it could just be no, the pot just, committed, bluffing. Like it was a whole I get thing. the pot committed. It was a good one, Jay. Thanks, I, man. I, I, I got your back. Yeah, bad, you okay. In this, bro. in this game of fascist poker, then Jordy, I'll, I'll, I'll you. borrow your, you're welcome. Um, but they're playing with a seven, two off suit. That's what I'm exactly. saying. Yeah. There you go. So, so, so when we're going to show you these hearings of what went down in the oversight, committee and what went down in the so-called weaponization hearing, which is just the MAGA Republicans led by Jim Jordan, weaponizing a committee to go after Donald Trump's enemies. Like all of this was coordinated between Donald Trump, Kevin McCarthy, Elise Stefanik, uh, all of the MAGA leadership, James Comer, Jim Jordan, they all had conversations about this. They they met as soon as special counsel Jack Smith sent a target letter to Donald Trump informing him that uh, indictments regarding Trump's election interference would be uh, imminent. 
there was a meeting that was held or phone conversations that were held. And the MAGA Republican House of Representatives leadership was on that. And they plotted how to defend Donald Trump and go on the offense against special counsel Jack Smith and President Biden. And one of the things that they wanted to do was to hurt President Biden by attacking President Biden's son, again, Hunter Biden, who's never held a position in the government, unlike Donald Trump's daughter, Ivanka, and son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who made $600 million while actually working in the government in positions they were never elected to, where they couldn't even get security clearances for, and then left and got a $2 billion check from the Saudis. But I just want to show you, this is Elise Stefanik, and she's asked, you know, did you have this meeting that's been reported about plotting to go on the offense and to defend Donald Trump and to attack the DOJ and to attack Joe Biden with deranged conspiracies. Play this clip. Yes, ma'am. Have you spoken with former President Trump since he learned that he's the target in Jack Smith's probe on January 6th? I have spoken with President Trump. I spoke with him yesterday. I speak with President Trump uh, on a weekly basis, give or take. And uh, this is yet another example of the illegal weaponization of the Department of Justice to go after Joe Biden's top political opponent. And it is not a coincidence that the same week that House Republicans are having a very important oversight hearing to hear from two credible IRS whistleblowers about the politicization of the Department of Justice when it came to the investigation of Hunter Biden, that this is the same week that a political um, political arm of the Joe Biden campaign in Jack Smith goes after the top leading opponent. It's so Orwellian. It's so 1984. You know, and also, you know, she and Kevin McCarthy, you're going to get mad at me when I say this, are semi-intelligent individuals, and they very much know exactly what they are doing here. When she ran for Congress, she was billed as a centrist and as a normal person, but she realized that she could take the elevator to the penthouse if she just went full in on the Donald Trump cult. And that's exactly what she did. And then she was elevated to one of the top leadership positions, you know, essentially in running for the speakership um, because she's Donald Trump's biggest cheerleader, biggest ally. So I want to show you what went down in these hearings. We're going to focus I wanna, on- I want to talk about her for a second, uh, just for a sec. She is also clearly vying to be Donald Trump's VP, in my opinion. I think she views that as a possibility. I think she is sucking up to him as well for that reason. And I think of all the people out there, people like her and Kevin McCarthy are the most evil out of all yep. of them because of exactly what you just said. They know exactly what they are doing and they are frankly complete sellouts to the United States of America. I mean, what she said there was that she is going to attack the American institutions to defend Donald Trump. They are going after the special counsel, an independent investigation. They are calling it an arm of the Biden campaign. That is so anti-American to even say. It is so toxic. It is so incredibly disgraceful to spew that conspiracy theory nonsense, to spew those lies. It is a disgrace. It is beneath the dignity of any office, of any person, of any American. It is absolutely atrocious. And then I love the line where they go, oh, and look at this. Like, what a surprise. What a coincidence. Uh, what, I, I can't believe. Look, this looks like they're about to indict Donald Trump the same week we're doing a Hunter investigation. How could that have happened? You do the Hunter, you do the whistleblower investigations every week. You do those every week. <laughs> and it's not a coincidence. You do it to time it out that way because you are holding these hearings for one reason and one reason only. You are holding these hearings to try to deflect from Donald Trump's crimes. So the closer we get to indictments, the more you ramp up the ridiculous hearings. So no, it's not a coincidence, Elise Stefanik. You are the one doing it. And then they're going, what a coincidence. Oh my God, how could this happen? It's just, su it's such, it's so absurd. Sorry. And they have to call him President Trump. Like he's not the president. Like they have to continually repeat President it's Trump. So like you don't see the Democrats saying President Obama, President Obama, President Clinton, President Clinton. It's like move on. They like, also and, do with a specific thing. Also, they'll go President Trump, and then they'll just go Biden. 
You know, I, I, MTG was doing that throughout the hearing all the time. President Trump and Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. And it's like, excuse me. So the Wednesday <laughs> hearing in the House Oversight Committee, MAGA Republicans put two fake IRS whistleblowers. And the thrust of their complaint is that there was all of this delay taking place in the criminal investigation into Hunter Biden by the prosecutor in charge. But when you really drill down on what their complaint is, the delay they complain about took place in like April of 2020, like when Biden was not the president. You know, that's number one. Number two, the prosecutor who they complain about was somebody who Donald Trump appointed. It's David Weiss. It's a Republican. And so these fake IRS whistleblowers, they're not the decision makers. The United States attorney federal prosecutor is the decision maker. And why isn't the federal prosecutor testifying because he can't. There's currently a plea agreement that has not been ruled on by the judge who has to approve it and then have a sentencing. But the Trump appointed prosecutor, David Weiss, said that he would actually like to speak before the committee. The committee knew that, but also knew he couldn't speak yet. So they wanted to hold the hearings right away so that he couldn't rebut their fake whistleblowers because he's not allowed to speak yet. What they should have done if they actually cared about the facts is just wait about three or four more months when he can testify, have him there as well and say, actually, the fact here's actually the truth. But, you know. It didn't exactly go as planned for MAGA Republicans this hearing as the Democrats cross-examine these witnesses. And it all crumbles very quickly because Jim Jordan, James Comer, Kevin McCarthy, Elise Stefanik, they conflate all of the facts, the administration. Well, that happened when Trump was in office. They don't say that. You know, when the New York Post and Fox writes these stories, they don't have like temporal references to when things occur. And so it's all conflated into these deranged conspiracies. But I thought this hearing was best summed up by Democratic Congress member Robert Garcia. Play this clip. But today's hearing is like most of the majority's investigations and hearings. A lot of allegations, zero proof, no receipts, but apparently some dick pics. Yeah, apparently some dick pics. And that's not like when you hear him say that, you're like, what? But then play this video of MAGA Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene. Play it. Mr. Chairman, um, we're at one minute and 53 seconds over. As long as Ms. Ocasio-Cortez can get equal time, uh, she can uh, keep going. I, I will uh, let, let uh, Ms. Green wrap up. Uh, Five seconds, and then uh, I'll give Mr. Mifume additional time. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Shapley, you, you started an investigation into Hunter Biden, codenamed Sportsman, which opened in November of 2018. Um, it, it was an offshoot of an investigation the IRS was conducting into a foreign-based amateur online pornography platform. Um, this, this is evidence uh, Mr. Mr. Of, Mr. of Hunter Mr. Biden Mr. making sex tapes. Excuse me, this is my time. Making of, pornography. Hearing. Should we be displaying this, Mr. Chairman, in, in, in the committee? The lady's time has expired and uh, went two and a half minutes over. She's displaying a photo for our audio listeners. Fortunately, it's censored. She's displaying a photo um, purportedly of Hunter Biden naked engaged in a sex act. It's not censored before the committee and before those in attendance. And by the way, she took the these non-consensual nude photographs that were apparently stolen from Hunter Biden. And then what she did is she put a newsletter together and sent it to her constituents, which is both a violation of uh, Georgia's revenge porn law and the revenge porn law of Washington, uh, D.C. And uh, by the way, potentially because she did that in a committee hearing, she could try to claim speech or debate clause immunity. But there is no immunity under the prevailing case law of Gravel versus United States and uh, the related progeny of cases for newsletters and press statements made to constituents. So 
there is a case to be made there. And one of the things I'd be interested to know is, did she send that to any constituents in Fulton County uh, where Fawny Willis is engaged in a criminal investigation of Donald Trump? Mm -hmm. Because if there are victims in Fulton County, Georgia, We've seen Fawny Willis, the Fulton County DA, being aggressive. So that's something I, I'm interested in as well, because let's face it, a Republican prosecutor enmeshed in the MAGA world is probably not going to take action. But look, I, I think Hunter Biden should sue her for intentional infliction of emotional distress and civil claims for the Georgia uh, stunt and the newsletter, because I don't believe that's covered by speech or debate clause immunity under the Constitution. It's not a legitimate legislative act, clearly. Um, but and I think there should be there should be criminal ramifications. And remember, that, Marjorie Taylor Greene was not on committees before this. Marjorie Taylor Greene was, in fact, kicked off committees. Marjorie Taylor Greene was put back on committees by Kevin McCarthy. Not only was she put back on committees, she was put on the most important, important. committees that we have specifically so she could do things like this. If we had a normal Republican Party, this would have never happened in the first place. And if we had a normal Republican Party, this person would have been at minimum thrown off these committees. And more rightfully so, she should have been expelled from Congress for behavior like this. But you will not even see an ethics investigation or anything for this clearly abhorrent behavior. I mean, showing non-consensual nudes Photos that you do not have the consent to show of somebody naked engaged in sexual acts. This is the person who goes around complaining about grooming and what are kids looking at in schools. And she goes yeah. and she sends these videos out to her constituents, some of who are minors who are children. Yeah. She's sending nude sex tapes out That's of Hunter point. Biden to her constituents. It's completely sick. Ben, let me take a... I guess a, a quick alternate take on yours about what Hunter should do in this situation. Look, it's disgusting and and criminal what she's doing. What they're all doing, these Republicans, from from defaming Hunter to just the, the right and slandering Hunter. But what they're trying to do is continue to poke the bear, being Hunter, in hopes that he does react, in hopes that he does sue them, rightfully so, because of the criminality in which they're, you know, just putting an onslaught onto him in the hopes that all of a sudden when, when you, you turn around, then they get to say to their constituents, look, the Bidens are coming after me now. The Bidens are coming after me. And so it, it's an interesting question to really ask, right? Because yes, absolutely. What's going on is absolutely disgusting, uh, just truly awful and criminal. And yeah. he has every right to sue. So you're saying would but it play into her hands? Is that what she's no is that what she's really trying to do in this situation? Yeah. I think she is. No, um, because they do that anyway. I mean, whether or not he sues or doesn't sue, they come up with a deranged conspiracy theory that the Bidens are coming after us and they'll play the victim regardless. So mm -hmm. I don't think that plays into the hand. And these people need to be called out. They need to be exposed. And we often get asked here, well, why do you show these clips? It's very graphic. Why are you talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene? You're, you're giving her attention. We're giving her the attention she deserves, though, yep. and treating her like the traitor and the criminal and the disgusting and vile human being that she is. What we don't do is do what the media goes. Oh, we just want to ignore her, except when we're going to do an hour long special on her on 60 Minutes and show clips of her in the kitchen cooking and just that 60 Minutes case was outrageous. We have to call it out in real time what it is so people understand this isn't just some normal Democratic Party against some normal Republican Party and there's policy disagreements. No, you've got a MAGA Republican Party that has completely lost its way and is a fascist political party because that's what the evidence shows. And I like that Representative Raja Krishnamurthy, Democrat, is evidence based. Evidence doesn't have a political party. It shouldn't. Right now it does. The Democrats are the only party that cares about evidence. But that shouldn't be, hey, the Democrats are the ones who care about evidence and the Republicans are the ones who make it up. Because I just want you to sh show you what Representative Krishnamurthy did to these witnesses, Shapley and Ziegler, and basically showed that, wait a minute, so 
you realize you're complaining about things when Trump was the president, right? And and they just like, well, well, could you rephrase the question? Here, play the clip. You were concerned about the complexities of the election cycle and potential delays that arose in connection with the election cycle. You said at page 23, and I remember there were always times where we were always on an impending election cycle. It was always the elections being brought up in early 2020. It was the presidential primaries. Now, sir, Joe Biden was not the president at that time either, was he? I, I mean, the answer to your question is no, he was not, but I don't see where you referenced it in my, you know, for Page me to follow Page 23. Along. You're talking about how the election cycle is delaying decisions by the prosecution and it turns out that the delay oh. in the election cycle was happening at a time when joe biden was not the president i'm sorry sir that's in special agent ziegler's transcript that's why i couldn't find it so, so mr ziegler and you shared concerns about delays related to the election cycle but at that time joe biden was not the president i believe at that time he was the nominee for president well, he was not the president, was he? Uh, it, I, it's just a simple question, sir. Can you rephrase the what, the, what time period? Joe Biden about? was not the president in the presidential primaries in 2020. Correct. That is correct. Sir, finally, Mr. Shapley, you said that warrants were ready as soon as April 2020 to begin searching for records, but actions weren't taken with regard to those warrants. Again, Joe Biden was not the president in April 2020, was he? That has to do with so I'm confused by your line of questioning. We're talking about an election to which uh, now President Biden was a part of. So he didn't have to be the president to have election meddling. No, but the question is this. Yes. Was he the president at that time in April 2020? The, 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 it's been asked and answered. The, and what's the answer, sir? The elect, the elect. The answer is? You, Yes or no? Is no that. Thank you. The answer is, was Joe Biden the president? By the way, that just, I could show you a hundred other clips, but to me, that one just shows you the credibility of these whistleblowers totally. because the answer is no. Joe Tough Biden question. was not the president. It's not a <laughs> trick question. Joe Biden, as a private citizen candidate, cannot have done anything with Donald Trump running the government, a Trump appointee prosecutor leading the investigation. And all of their complaints took place essentially during the time Trump was in office. And then after President Biden could have fired the Trump appointed prosecutor like you fire all of the other United States attorneys when a new administration takes place. Biden's like, you know what? I don't even want the appearance of impropriety. I'm going to keep in place the Trump appointed Republican prosecutor going after my son instead of appointing a Democratic prosecutor who may be loyal to me because whatever happens, I want law and order to prevail. And then Merrick Garland told the Trump appointed prosecutor, you have full authority. Don't ask me anything anymore. Whatever you want to do, if you want what's called special attorney status to file charges in other states, you've got it. But those idiots that you just saw confused special attorney status with special counsel status because they're freaking morons and they don't know the nuances <laughs> of the regulations and internal rules of the Department of Justice. So they heard the word special and they're like, oh, well, they, they wanted to become special counsel. And no, the Trump appointed prosecutor said it was special attorney status, meaning I could file in other states, even though I'm just the even though I'm just the prosecutor in Delaware. And Garland said, sure, you have special attorney status. So again, evidence, evidence. And that's what that's one of the things we talk about here over and over and over again on the Midas Touch Network. I am evidence based. And so if they showed me a email, a document, a wire transfer from Joe Biden doing something corrupt, I wouldn't be like, oh, that's just the weaponized. I'd be pissed if Joe Biden did that. But they've showed not one scintilla of all of that. And instead they talk about, oh, we got a good whistleblower today. Who is it? Oh, it's a Russian oligarch, a freaking Russian oligarch. All right, all right, all right, all right, right. We got 17 audio recordings. Wh where are the audio where recordings? Where did they go? Oh, 
They don't, they, they don't really exist. They, they're missing. All right, we got a new whistleblower. Okay, who is it? Oh, well, he's, he's, he's in the spy business. You mean the Chinese spy? Oh, yeah, oh, 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 oh that makes it. That, 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 that makes, that's what James Comer said. It's kind of in he's the spy missing, business. It's, it's a literal, <laughs> it's a quote that I'm giving. I'm going to throw out more quotes. I'm <laughs> fired up, folks, so stay tuned. We got a lot more to discuss, but let's take a quick break. Usa. The next best thing to jumping in a pool in your birthday suit midsummer, sitting on your Hello Tushy bidet. This butt blaster instantly cools and cleans your body's biggest heat zone without requiring you to hop in the shower. Buckle up because this is about to get real. The Hello Tushy bidet keeps my butt feeling clean and fresh. I'm telling you, if you haven't experienced Hello Tushy for yourself, you are missing out big time. And you need to get yourself a Tushy too because no one likes a dirty butt. No one! Hello Tushy Bidet cleans your bum twice as better than wiping and prevents poo particles from spreading to your hands and everything you touch. The Hello Tushy Bidet washes your bum with fresh water for a way better clean than toilet paper. Simply spray and pat dry. It attaches to your existing toilet. There's no electrician or plumber needed. It installs in less than eight minutes. It cuts down on your TP use by 80%, saving money and paper waste. Make the restroom your best room with the complete Tushy system, including the Tushy bidet attachment, ottoman, toilet brush, and Tushy stand and tissues. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. Hello Tushy Bidet pays for itself in a few months. Every Hello Tushy Bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. With over 100,000 five-star reviews, see why millions of people already love Hello Tushy. Go to hellotushy.com forward slash Midas and use promo code Midas to get 10% off plus free shipping on your first bidet order. That's hellotushy.com slash Midas for 10% off. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend that you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at that perfect temperature all night long. Now using silver infused fabrics originally inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at that perfect temperature all night so you get better sleep every night. These sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than the bed sheets used by some five-star hotels. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. Go to trymiracle.com slash Midas to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code MIDAS at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash Midas and use the code Midas to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash Midas to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this. Those were some great ads. And like, Let's perfect, go. Like Let's the go. perfect timing for those ads. And we got sheets. We got sheet. Oh, and so we got oh. a, you know. <laughs> I, both those products, by the way, A plus cannot say enough good things about them. Links in the description. Yeah, Definitely you, check them out. If you're you go from MTG show and nudes to the Tushy Blaster. I think it's a. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to set my grandkids down deep in the future. And I'm just going to show them all of the ads that we used to do on the show. You, you really get it all. You really get it all on the show. Really, you, I'm not, you get it all. 
and all and jokes can, aside, Hello Tushy is amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone should use that. Yeah, go, go check out the description in the co- in the description of the video or in the podcast description and check it out. I, I was watching Jordy too as he was uh, as he was watching the ad back himself, and it was quite a quite a joy to see Jordy <laughs> wa- 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 watching himself read the ads. Always, well, always fun. I, I, I like peeling back the curtain real quick, Ben, because I know you hate when we go on these tangents. But I, when, when I when I watch these ads, I watch them for the first time i record them and then i see what brett or salty do in the edit and so i watch them for the first time with the midas mighty look i don't hate that we go on these tangents i mean ultimately we are a news show so my job is to focus on the news and what's news going on brotherly but, love yeah. ben you know yeah, we gotta get but here's the thing too why we say you can't call the maga republicans conservative right there's nothing conservative about their behavior anymore. As I always say, it's fascism plus idiocracy equals MAGA Trumpism. You could call them MAGA Republicans or just MAGA, but do not call them conservative. President Biden used the term conservative to refer Mm. to Marjorie Taylor Greene. I was like, don't call it. She's not very conservative. Go with the MAGA Republican framing because she's not a conservative person at all. But here's another example why she is, you know, they they just crave that, you know, the attention and, and, and he, yeah. here's Marjorie Taylor Greene's new thing. She went from making a song with the January 6th insurrectionist. Now there's a pro January 6th insurrection MTG rap song that she made with someone named Forgadio Blow, who's like the worst rapper ever. But in MAGA Republican world, if you're like the worst fill in the blank ever, if you just support insurrectionists and say you're pro Trump, then you can grift off at them and make millions of dollars or make lots. By of the money. way, this rapper, uh, I, it's, I feel weird even calling him a real rapper, but this guy has said that like there is a clip. I think I, Patriot yeah. Takes had posted it. And in the clip, he goes, yeah, well, my, no one cared about my music. So then I went MAGA. And now a lot of people seem to like it and they're making a lot of money. Like that's that's the grift right there. He's, and oh, he's right. really bad. Like he's a bad like he is bad at what he does. It's like I go in a car and that is very far and i don't want a scar january 6th insurrectionist let's go far yay you know and it's like okay right. if we don't was- have if we don't have a follower with a music production background who can't throw that behind a beat or something and send it to me, <laughs> that's I mean, like I, I, that's basically his rhyme yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm, you know all he has to do at the end of it is just, go january 6th and it's like okay that was uh, the- uh, on that note on, on like one of the last shows ben asked ben was like can somebody put jim jordan's face on a mosquito and oh, send yeah, it to us I, I we will make it an emoji uh, for the chat uh, for the subscribers at some point but i have literally every time i check my phone thinking i have important emails it's another person sending me and they're Jordan. very good. <laughs> they're all amazing. You have them <laughs> loaded. Do you have so them loaded up? Good. I don't. I don't. So here's what I want you to do. Let me them. let me put a task for you, Brett, because you oh, can't boy. bring that up and not actually have the receipts. So during the next break, you got to find all of those gym. You, at least give me five or six. I'll give you a few. G- we get, yeah, get, 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 get me if you anyway. Marjorie Taylor Greene made a rap song with the horrible rapper. And here's the here's a photo of her. Here's a video of them in the rap song. This is real. This isn't like AI Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's like sits on the car in like like a short dress on like a convertible. And the guy raps about like chopping women into pieces and sex trafficking. Like it's some deranged stuff. Do not call these people conservative at all, which brings me to the next hearing that the MAGA Republicans held in this Orwellian entity that they call the Weaponization Subcommittee of the Judiciary Committee. This is chaired by Jim Jordan. And today's guest was RFK Jr., who MAGA Republicans are trying to push as their chaos candidate uh, to attack President Biden. They also had a uh, Breitbart editor, a former New York Post writer, Emma Jo Morris. Uh, But yet again, the Democrats exposed what was taking place here. Also, RFK Jr. like lied about actually everything. So let me just show you what went down in this hearing today. So Jim Jordan begins the hearing by amplifying right-wing conspiracy theories that Hank Aaron, who is 86 years old, died because of the COVID vaccine. That is false and just harmful to Hank Aaron's family. Like just disgusting things that they say, but this is how Jim Jordan starts the hearing. Play it. 
The subject line says, flagging Hank Aaron misinformation. Now, misinformation is when you don't have the facts right. You're saying things that aren't true. But when you look at Mr. Kennedy's tweet, there was nothing in there that was factually inaccurate. Hank Aaron, real person, great American, passed away after he got the vaccine, pointing out, just pointing out facts. And yet the White House, on the third day, was trying, actually, 104 a.m. on January 23rd, 2021, 37 hours into the administration, they were trying to censor Mr. Kennedy. I find that interesting, the irony here, at trying to censor the guy who's actually their Democrat primary opponent. Go figure. Not the Democrat primary opponent three days after Biden went into office at that time. RFK Jr. was not a candidate then. I don't believe the tweet was ever even taken down. And yes, the Biden administration was critical of people pushing lies about the vaccine when they were trying to get the vaccine distributed, especially to certain groups of people who were not taking the vaccines in the numbers that the study showed needed to be taken. You have the right to criticize people. There was no threat taking place. But again, you see how the MAGA Republicans conflate the time period. Oh, the political opponent. RFK Jr. was not a political opponent then. He was the same nutcase that he's always been spewing anti-vax rhetoric like he always has, which, by the way. Also, it's like, oh, he got the vaccine and then he died. OK, I'm sure he went to the bathroom earlier that day also and then he died. Doesn't mean him going to the bathroom caused his death. Like, it's just a ridiculous framing whatsoever. And it's so dangerous. And it's an exact yeah. example, actually, of why Jim Jordan is so dishonest, why he is so dangerous. He continues to spread yeah. that as if he's the truth. And Republicans have all rallied around COVID disinformation. Their whole thing now was like, oh, polio vaccine? Who needs it? Who needs it? Let's 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 look into that one. <laughs> all these other vac- like, yeah, yeah. Let's look into it. It's like, I think, I think the science is a bit settled on, on, on that one. <laughs> like it's, it, it's just, it's full disinformation all the time. And when proven wrong, when shown the statistics, instead of acknowledging that they just double down and triple down and spike the football, even though they lost the argument, it's just what you see continuously. So Dan Goldman, Democratic Congress member has to remind Jim Jordan to swear in the witnesses <laughs> play this clip. As a mind, as mine's not. Make sure it's Mr. on. Mr. Chairman, are you going to swear in the witnesses? If you'll please uh, stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm? Do you swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is true and correct to the best of your knowledge, information, uh, information and belief? So help you God. He like struggled to even say it once he like even had to administer the oath because let's face it, I don't think there's anything true that was that came out of RFK Jr.'s mouth uh, during this hearing. This is RFK Jr. denying saying what he said on video. He says he never said anything anti-Semitic in his life. Like we heard the video, we we we've we've seen it. Play this clip. And by the way, I want to say this while I'm on the record that in my entire life, and why I'm under oath, in my entire life, I have never uttered a phrase that was either racist or anti-Semitic. RFK Jr. has been condemned by the Anti-Defamation League and the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum, just to name a few. And here RFK Jr. lies and says, he has never been anti-vax. That's like his, that's like, that's like his like thing. your whole thing, bro. Play it. Virtually everything, every statement that you just made about me is inaccurate. I have never advised black Americans not to receive vaccines. At one point you say I'm anti-vax and that's a bad thing. The other thing, the <laughs> other moment you point out that all my children are vax. I fact, I'm fully compliant with the vaccine schedule myself, except for COVID. I, I, I took flu vaccines for 20 years straight. I have never been an anti-vax. I have never told any, I have never told the public avoid vaccination. The only thing I've asked for, and my views are constantly misrepresented. 
RFK Juniors repeatedly made anti-vax statements. Salon had to retract a 2005 article they published from RFK Jr. linking vaccines with autism in 2021 on a podcast. RFK Jr. said he accosts people carrying babies on hiking trails and in grocery stores, urging them not to vaccinate to save the children, saying his fellow anti-vaxxers should, quote, come out of the closet. I want to show you. That's like Subway saying, yeah, we're not really into sandwiches. We're not really into the whole sandwich. We don't do sandwiches here at Subway. It's like, that's actual, that's what you're known for. Like the, in fact, the reason why you're here is mostly that (laughs) like (laughs) Jack, Jack Smith begs to differ. Jack Smith's on, on, on Subway. He gets it. This is MAGA (laughs) Republic. <laughs> this is MAGA Republican Harriet Hageman who took over Liz Cheney's seat, using her questioning and time to push the conspiracy theory that the FBI, led by Donald Trump's handpicked FBI director, rigged the 2020 election for Biden. Play the clip. Do you think the FBI tried to ensure that the American people didn't hear the story? in order to change the outcome of the election in 2020? I I don't know how to answer that question because I'm not in their head. Uh... Then Elise, (laughs) and Elise Stefanik asks RFK about about the Hunter Biden, I don't even know what to say about that one, about Hunter Biden laptop. RFK says he doesn't know about it. But just so you see, this is Elise Stefanik has the call with Donald Trump. She doesn't even care what the hearing's about. She's got to talk about those Hunter Biden nudes. Play the clip. And Mr. Kennedy, I want to ask you specifically about the Hunter Biden laptop story. The total blackout on all social media outlets as well as telecom. You couldn't text the link to the Hunter Biden laptop story. This specifically was a form of election interference by the U.S. government in the 2020 election. I don't know enough about it. I know that uh, there was censorship on that story and other stories that, uh, you know, presumably um, could have changed people's minds about the election. You know, one of the things the Democrats point out in this hearing as well is that what Republicans call censorship is criticism. Republicans believe they can just say anything, no matter how hateful, racist, dangerous, and they can't be criticized. That's the opposite of censorship, to have a First Amendment where there is robust criticism. That's not cancel culture. That is accountability culture where people can say, you have horrible views and you are saying hateful and disgusting and dangerous things because a lot of these posts that they talk about, we'll get to in a little bit, they weren't even taken down from Twitter. Like the posts remained up. RFK Jr. has been on every major network. He's had town halls hosted on Fox. He's going to have more hosted on Fox. He's speaking in this committee hearing. He's gone on Joe Rogan. He has the biggest microphone and platform in the world, basically. You're censoring me. You're censoring me. You're speaking everywhere about your ridiculous stuff. And no, people have the right to criticize you. And I thought Democratic Congress member Connolly had one of the best, best lines here and basically said to him, you are bringing shame on your storied family name that I revere. Play this clip. And no matter what you may think, Mr. Kennedy, and I revere your name, you're not here to propound your case for censorship. You are here for cynical reasons to be used politically by that side of the aisle to embarrass the current president of the United States, and you're an enabler in that effort today. And it brings shame on a story name that I revere. I began my political interest with your father, and it makes me profoundly sad to see where we have descended today in this hearing. That was a very deep moment. And then you have Democratic Congress member Dan Goldman, again, coming with the evidence, with the facts. Like, oh, yeah, that tweet that you're saying has been censored. It's still up. It's never been taken down. Play that clip. 
And if we're talking about censorship here, which I believe is presumably the reason why Mr. Kennedy is here, the tweet that you've identified was never taken down. Whatever the government may have tried to do, and I don't, I don't agree that it tried to do what you said it did, it wasn't taken down. So how can the government actually censor anyone if there's enough freedom within the companies they're talking to that they reject whatever request that the government makes? Dan Goldman comes with more receipts when he's asking this Breitbart editor and former New York Post writer who wrote one of those stories on Hunter Biden about, let's talk about where are you getting your information from? Okay, so you claim there's a laptop. Let's just accept that there is the existence of a laptop. Well, you've never received the laptop. What you received was a hard drive from Rudy Giuliani right after he associated with agents of Russian intelligence and you never did a forensic analysis to determine the authenticity of what is on this hard drive. Watch how the Breitbart editor, former New York Post writer, responds. Play the clip. I want to focus now, Ms. Morris, on the laptop. There's been a lot of talk about the laptop being real. And that is true. There was a laptop. It's a computer, keyboard, screen. It is, it is real. But you never got a laptop before you wrote that story, did you? That's correct. You got a hard drive. Hard drive. And you received that hard drive from Rudy Giuliani, right? Yep. Okay. Who had been openly associating with an agent of Russian intelligence in the months leading up to your story. You agree with that, right? Uh, I guess. Now, did you do a forensic examination of that hard drive before you printed your story? Uh, we had tech people in the post looking at it, yes, yes. That's a, that's a forensic analysis? No, not... Uh, I, I highly doubt that? the New York Post has the ability to do a forensic analysis of a, of a hard drive. Okay. Um, Ms. Morris, were you the uh, primary drafter of this article? That, yes. Bruce Golding was not the primary author? No. Drafter? No. Did he, uh, did he help with the, uh, with the article? Yes. And then isn't it true that he decided to withdraw his name from the byline because of concerns that he had? I wasn't involved with that. Well, isn't it true whether you were involved in it or not? I don't know the details. But he did withdraw his name from the byline. His name was not published. Right. Well, I'd like to introduce for the record a, an article in the New York Times uh, that uh, says the first line is New York Post front page article about Hunter Biden was written mostly by a staff reporter who refused to put his name on it, two Post employees said. By the way, as a litigator, that was a masterful cross-examination because she was trying to lie and then he would follow up with the perfect question. Also, when he said, so you're aware that Rudy Giuliani, who gave you that hard drive at that time, was openly associating with Russian intelligence. And then she cavalierly responds, uh, I, I, I guess, I guess, I guess. He is, is with Russian spies. He's cavorting with Russian spies and then handing you a hard drive that you don't do a forensic audit and then just publish a story. And there's another clip where someone asks her or one of the Republicans. So everything you said is true. And her response was, well, I'm 27 years old. W what? Goes, I was 27 when I wrote it. So, I was yeah. so it better be. It better be. It's like, what are you talking about? But I found her incredibly unserious the entire time as a witness. And she was clearly kind of disdainful towards the Democrats questioning her. She comes from Breitbart. She was there with an axe to grind. And I think even if you just listen to her, you could hear it in her voice. I think if you watch her, you could see her facial reactions uh, to all the questions, to everything thing going on. She really, you know, she's like there as a political operative. She's there as someone from Breitbart, not as a serious witness. These are not serious people who they are bringing forward. And the RFK thing, frankly, is sad. I mean, remember, they're doing this whole RFK thing. It's the whole thing's a scam because they think it's going to cut into Biden's lead. There was like a, a poll that came out. He's running as a Democrat, even though none of his beliefs are Democratic. You have all literally all of MAGA, all these Republicans supporting him. You have him 
uh, hanging out with Steve Bannon and Michael Flynn and all these MAGA people. You have Bannon pushing him out there to say, hey, they, they should vote for this guy. It's like the most clear op that you could ever possibly oh, yeah. see. Yeah. And he is completely in on it. There was a poll that had come out like months ago before anyone really knew who he was. And they had him polling at like 20 percent. And it was very clear that it was an outlier or people just saw the name RFK Jr. and thought <laughs> that it was literally RFK and responded. And all the polls since then, like what I, th I saw like this morning, there was a poll that at RFK below 9 percent favorable and somewhere like 70 percent unfavorable in the Democratic Party. Uh, you know no who it becomes very similar to there, Brett? Sorry to cut you off, but you know who it's just reminding me of? The, the more people see the guy, the more they hate him. DeSantis. The more the guy's face gets out there, the more the more RFK Jr. goes on these shows and goes, and his his just radical you know ideology gets well, exposed once, to the masses. I mean, it, it becomes wildly unpopular. Once you hear him speak, once you hear what he is saying, you very quickly understand who he is. And I'm sure in the past, you know, he was passionate about the environment. He did great work for the environment. That was his thing. He should have stayed in that lane. He clearly doesn't know what he's talking about with the vaccines. He has been co-opted quite willingly by the far right. He rushed right to Fox News right after the hearing to talk smack about the Democrats. He's going to be at a town hall with Hannity soon. I mean, the whole thing is very <laughs> clear. Town hall in, 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 Say that in, one more time. In in fact, what I would love to the poll I would love to see that I've not seen commissioned is I would love to see them put RFK Jr. in a poll with the people in the Republican primary where he belongs because he's far more popular in the Republican primary. And if an RFK even were to run as an independent, say, okay, we're going to have him be a spoiler candidate. He's going to run as an independent. I bet he takes away more votes from Trump or whoever the Republican nominee is from the Democrats. I guarantee thousand it. Percent. And thousand I bet percent. if you put him up in that Republican primary, I, I, I would think that he would probably be even pretty close to DeSantis in the percentage would be my guess. Like he'd be somewhere 20% support, 25% support. He'd be somewhere in the Vivek Ramasamwe, uh, the, what a weird party this is, uh, DeSantis, oh, you know, Trump. He'd be up there. I'm not saying he'd be by Trump, but he'd be somewhere between Vivek and DeSantis, in my opinion. He's far more popular. And ironically, I think this whole thing has a chance of backfiring on them because he's actually Actually more popular in the Republican Party yes. than he is the Democrat. Well, Brett, we say it all the time. The Republican Party, the modern day Republican Party are just professional rake steppers. And this is them doing it again. They're building this person up who's eventually going to run as independent or whatever and take votes away from whomever their candidate is. Can this you is imagine only... what the Republican National Convention is going to look like? You're going to oh have, God. you know, Donald Trump saying they're all out to get me and we got to go and get them and they all want to get me and this prosecutor and that prosecutor and this judge and that judge. It's just going to be him whining. And then you're going to have Ted Cruz and people like that saying, and Barbie, and we, we got to go after Barbie. You know, I, I think, you know, Americans who don't watch the Midas Touch Network, you know, which they should make sure you show this to all of your Tell friends, a friend. workers, but like, I think they can be like, whoa, what, 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 we're war on, on Barbie. What are you talking about? That's their new one. We talked about it on the other show. The MAGA Republicans have declared war on the Barbie movie. There is a scene in it, apparently where there's a Barbie map, which is in the made up Barbie world. It's not real countries. It's not real. The whole thing is a fictional world and a fiction it's a grand map. It's not, <laughs> nothing's real. There's a big blob that says Asia. There's a big, like all, all the things are just kind of next to each other. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason. It's not to scale. <laughs> and then, and then MAGA Republicans like Ted Cruz say, well, there's nine dashes by Asia, which represents the Chinese communist agenda to take over Taiwan. And now this is being spewed to my little daughter and I don't want my daughter to watch it. And then by the way, Ted Cruz was asked like, okay, have you watched the movie? And no, I haven't watched the movie here. Play, play this clip. Did you even see the movie or did you just see this stupid map? Yeah, no, I, I have not seen the movie. I've just seen the, the stupid map.
When we come back, we're going to show you some mosquito photos that you all made of Jim Jordan. Because as I said, the Jim Jordan's like a mosquito. It's like, get away, Jim Jordan. Just Jim Jordan, get away. But they're MAGA mosquitoes. I mean, that's probably a good analogy of MAGA in general, Jordy, from fascist poker to MAGA mosquitoes. And by the way, I invite all of the Midas Mighty, not just to send Brett mosquito photos with Jim Jordan's head on it, but start sending him of all MAGA Republicans as mosquitoes. <laughs> you could just send Brett. And Brett loves getting these, especially people, when people Brett's wonder, like, oh, why, Brett, why did you miss my email? I was hoping for a response by the end. Of, I'm like, I'm, I'm weeding through all these mosquitoes. Especially when Brett's <laughs> phone is on snooze and he is sleeping. Best time to send wild. him MAGA <laughs> mosquito photos. By the way, I also want to thank all of the Midas Mighty who became members of our YouTube channel. Jordy, you gave the challenge on the last episode that if we got 50 or 30 members 40 50, 40 40 members, right in the middle I was, there I was, I was close right in the middle we do if facts we got the 40 touch members network. there would be a Jordy emoji everybody now has the privilege of seeing a Jordy emoji you're all the best um but if you're not a member make sure you become a member of our youtube channel right now you could buy memberships for other people we don't have outside investors here on the midas touch network perhaps not the greatest business model of not having outside <laughs> investors but we got emojis <laughs> there you go so we fund this with emojis and patreon we'll we'll, we'll may have to tweak that business model a little bit um, um, but uh, when we come back, we still got a lot to discuss, especially about special counsel Jack Smith updates. Also, two federal judges issuing scathing orders against Donald Trump. Donald Trump taking L after L in federal court. And then let's go to the normal world where the Democrats and President Biden are like actually delivering for the people. We'll talk about all of that when we come back from this quick break. Jewelry is having a big moment right now. And with hundreds of products popping up in your feed every day, it can be hard to find a brand you trust. Alex and Ani has been creating meaningful jewelry for over 20 years, designing pieces that connect you with all of life's important moments. With an emphasis on value, there's truly something for everyone. You might be most familiar with their signature charm bangle. This bracelet literally created the category of meaningful jewelry and had you stacking charms from your wrist to your elbow. This piece is an icon for a reason. Completely size inclusive, each bracelet is adorned with a symbol designed to tell your story and express your unique style. Beyond the bangle, you'll find stylish, affordable jewelry for every occasion, from classic pieces to bold statement looks. Don't know where to start? Alex and Ani makes it easy to unpack the trends you're after and sprinkle in your personality too. Each piece comes with a personalized message and meaning, truly making it the perfect gift. You can take comfort in knowing that you're shopping with a socially conscious brand as well. To date, Alex and Ani has donated over $60 million to nonprofits worldwide, connecting fashion and philanthropy in an easy, fun, affordable way. Visit alexandani.com right now to discover the confidence that comes with a perfectly accessorized piece of jewelry. Right now, Alex and Ani is offering our audience 20% off with code MIDAS at checkout. Again, head to alexandani.com, that's A-L-E-X-A-N-D-A-N-I.com, and use code MIDAS at checkout for 20% off your order. Oh, hey, when did you get here? Let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Henson Shaving. Look, everyone knows how annoying cheap razors are. The cuts, the irritation, the frustration. And don't get me started with subscription razor services, the headaches that those can cause. That's why you gotta meet Henson Shaving. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the ISS. That's the International Space Station and Mars Rover, and now they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. Razor blades, they're like diving boards. The longer the board, the more wobble, the more wobble, the more nicks, cuts, and scrapes. A bad shave, it, it isn't a blade problem. It's an extension problem. By using aerospace grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of human hair. That means a secure and stable blade with a vibration-free shave. It gets better. The razor has built-in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. Seriously, Henson Shaving wants the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no obsolescence. The Henson razor, it works with standard dual edge blades to give you that old school shave with the benefit of new school tech. 
Once you own the Henson razor, it's only about $3 to $5 per year to replace the blades. My first shave with the Henson razor was incredibly refreshing. The design is sleek and the durability is top notch. The Henson razor is truly much better than your run of the mill quote unquote traditional razor brand. And the affordability factor is absolutely game changing. No more wasting your money on expensive blades. With Henson shaving, you get a year year of blades for just $5. Okay, so here's what you have to do. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash Midas to pick the razor for you and use code Midas and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash Midas and use code Midas. How about that? We got Henson Shaver. We got Alex and Ani is back. Love Alex and Ani is so back. back. They're so back. back. We've got, we got Tushy. We Hello, got, Tushy. Uh, we, we, Miracle we Made Sheets. Made Sheets. I mean, pro-democracy loving sponsors, stuff. folks. All right, we got a lot to discuss, but first we got to do our Jim Jordan mosquito competition. So we talked about how the MAGA Republicans are like mosquitoes and how Jim Jordan's nah, 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 and it's just like zap, 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 get out of here, Jim Jordan mosquito. Yeah. So a lot of you took to heart what we said. Some even made the term MAGA Ketos instead of mosquitoes. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Okay. MAGA Ketos. But this is a MAGA Keto by the name of Jim Jordan. Let's show you to him. <laughs> oh, man. All right, there they are, different ones right there. <laughs> These are different- really good. Yeah, they're yeah, really so good. They certainly really- some different takes on the MAGA Ketos of, of Jim Jordan. Mag-a-ketos. And I just want to I want to thank everybody for your great effort. <laughs> Y'all can tell us in the chat which one you like the best. But um, yeah, that's what we do here at the Midas Touch Network, I guess. <laughs> our, uh, the I Midas Mighty gotten- are creative. That is really impressive. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't quite gotten permission to, to, you know, say everyone's full names or anything, but I will give a shout out to the first names. Shout out to Chris. Shout out to Charles. Shout out to Bob. And one of their names over here, Dale. Um, thank you for the submissions. Oh. These are all fantastic. And keep in the comments, them. you could like, keep sending them and, and let us know in the comments which ones you like best. Yeah, great work. Jordy, <laughs> I wanted to say this before we I, no, really amazing work. I, I, I wanted to say this before we hit break um, when we were talking about Ted Cruz and Barbie and this whole notion of, of sort of, yeah, the mosquitoes. Now, this, this, this whole notion of, of the culture wars that we see these Republicans continue to hang their hats on the green M&M, the, uh, Bud Light, uh, Barbie, Mr. Potato Head. Now, now, now it's Barbie. It's so elitist of them. And that's how I think pro-democracy Americans need to start calling them out. It's such an elitist take. Like, do you think the average American really gives two craps about this Barbie scene that's in the movie for two seconds? Or do they care about how they're going to feed their families? Do they care about their health care? Like the average American, there's no way this is resonating with them day in and day out. It's such an elitist, over-the-top thing that these Republicans continue to do when they pick the fights with the M&Ms and the Barbies. It's weird behavior and it's elitism at its core. Here's what they do. They, like little mosquitoes, right? They latch on. They, they, they latch on, they stick their little, whatever you call them in a mosquito that sucks your blood. They stick it into pop, various elements of pop culture because they know that it is a cheap and easy way in order to get airtime on Fox News, in order to get headlines, in order to get Twitter retweets from the cult, things like that. So they find the movie that- And they have no easy. real answers though to, 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 to help solve any important issues. Oh, Obviously, of, I know you of know course. it. And, yeah, no, and, of and so course that's they why have. they do it though. And that's that's what I mean by how just just overly elite this becomes is that they're talking about subjects that have no rhyme or reason that come up in any daily American's life. Yeah, but you have to look at how they flip it. And they flip it as the exact opposite of what you're saying, right? They flip it as, look at these elitist Hollywood movies that are coming out here. Exactly. And they want to tell you how to live your life and communist China, right? The, yep. Doing the Ted Cruz hurts. hurts. You do a very, you do very good. For you and Ben both, but your Ted Cruz is probably your best next to Marjorie Taylor Greene. It's yeah, called a proboscis, Brett. Everybody knows that the spear that sticks out of a knows. mosquito is called a is called a proboscis. It was on I the tip of my tongue. I, it's on the tip of your proboscis. It's on the tip I, of my I, proboscis. 
<laughs> do you hear that? Can you hear that on? Does it does it play when? Does I don't know. Play? Are you Up trying play? to play? Ben has no idea how technology works, and he's. I had to it. learn how to pronounce proboscis. All right, and all these right, mosquitoes back. with their proboscis. proboscis. <laughs> 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 all right, Trump indict Trump indictment. Watch. Here's my proboscis back onto the script. A federal grand jury deciding whether to indict Donald Trump over his election interference in 2020 continues to meet a former Trump aide, someone who works with the campaign, William Russell, went before the grand jury represented by Stanley Woodward, who represents all of the people associated with Donald Trump. It's like a cottage industry, the same lawyer who represents Walt now to represents Will Russell. Um, Russell had previously testified before the grand jury, which is investigating the January 6th riot and efforts to interfere with the unlawful transfer of power following the 2020 presidential election. So it's interesting that they've called him back um, as well. Um, and this comes after Trump received a target letter from special counsel Jack Smith. And most importantly, I feel special counsel Jack Smith eating a Subway sandwich, which in my theory, he ate that Subway sandwich right before he indicted Donald Trump back in June in connection strong, with that. Strong theory. Not to say, strong. you know, not, not saying I'm the reason Jack Smith eats at Subway, but you guys do remember that before the Midas days, I, I did marketing for Subway for about three and a half, four months. So you crushed it, thing, my campaign maybe influenced him to get Subway. And now, and now it's a thing. It's like, it's, it's like all, the butterfly yeah. effect. It's, butterfly yeah. effect. Trump also two major losses in federal court, um, basically on the same day, the middle of the week. First, you got federal judge Lewis Kaplan denying a new trial request for Donald Trump in the E. Jean Carroll case. And the judge basically said that what Donald Trump did is constitutes a rape based on the normal definition. The New York has a technical distinction about whether it was fingers or other body parts, but in very graphic detail, the judge explained that Donald Trump engaged in a sexual assault, that the unanimous jury verdict of $5 million must stand. And Donald Trump called out in this lengthy judicial opinion for engaging in sexual assault by a federal judge. That happened this week. But another thing happened this week by another federal judge in New York, Judge Alvin Hellerstein, who received the case. Donald Trump is trying to remove the case filed by the Manhattan District Attorney. It's filed in state court before Judge Juan Mershon. Donald Trump wants to judge shop, so he brought the case into federal court. The first judge had a conflict, so she rejected the case. It then got assigned to Judge Alvin Hellerstein. And Donald Trump removed the case to federal court by saying that federal law was implicated. So a federal court had to hear it. And Trump was saying that because he was in office and he was engaged in the uh, conduct of in furtherance of the office of the presidency, that it was kind of in the course and scope of his employment as being the president, uh, but put forward no evidence about that, but made that jurisdictional argument to try to get in federal court. So not only did Donald Trump lose the jurisdictional argument and the judge remands it to state court where it's been proceeding anyway, because Judge Alvin Hellerstein knew what Donald Trump was up to. So told the state court, do not delay, keep your proceedings going. I'll make my ruling when I make my ruling. There was an evidentiary hearing that was held in late June where Manhattan DA's office put on evidence and Trump put on evidence and it backfired miserably on Trump because now a federal judge made the following finding that the people, meaning the Manhattan DA, put forth evidence strongly supporting their allegations that the money paid to Cohen was reimbursement for hush money payment to a porn star. Exhibit 8, introduced without objection, shows a handwritten notation by someone in the Trump organization, likely the CFO, calculating how much Michael Cohen was to be repaid for advancing the 130000 hush money payment to a porn star, Stephanie Clifford, and how the payment to him was to be disguised as income rather than reimbursement. Trump himself, in a May 2018 tweet, described Cohen's monthly retainer as reimbursement in connection with a private contract. 
Well, one, the fact that it's a private contract is important in the sense that it's not for the United States government. So clearly it's not a federal issue. But look, you have the judge saying has put forth evidence strongly supporting their allegations. Their allegation is the crime that Donald Trump committed. <laughs> so in a jurisdictional motion, now a judge, a federal court basically said, yeah, yeah, no, I, I think there's strong evidence that you basically committed the crime. Both of those things happened this week in federal court, two separate federal judges. Like any one of these things should be utterly disqualifying, right? I mean, if two federal judges made this type of ruling about President Biden and President Biden went to a trial, there was an evidentiary hearing and he engaged in any of this. Heck, heck I've said it before. If Biden posted one QAnon meme, one, he'd lose my support because I have standards. I have standards in who I want to be a leader. And so if Biden talked about QAnon or said, you know, I'm going to F these people up, you know, or or derange prosecute, he'd lose my support for all of the great things I think he's done with the Infrastructure Act, with the Inflation Reduction Act, with the PACT Act, with all of his policies that I support. I, I'd be like, okay, this guy needs to go because we need to have standards and the standard, there are no standards in MAGA Republican world. And I think you've seen it throughout this episode, but let's go to a normal world, please. And let's talk about Brett. What are Democrats and President Biden doing? Break it down. All right. Prepare to get whiplash because you've heard a lot about. Are, MAGA are, 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 are they showing nudes? Let me get, are they showing nudes? Uh, no nudes, no nudes. Are they posting QAnon memes? Let me just check. Are they doing uh, that? Let me check. No. no let me I'm ask you this next QAnon one. Are they man. are they singing songs with the insurrectionists and terrorists? Are they, are they doing that? Let me, check, I'm check, let me check my notes. No, I don't. Are see they hanging out song. with Osama bin Laden's niece by any chance? Uh, let me check. Uh, Osama bin Laden, nor bin Laden, bin Laden, bin. No, not seeing that. Not uh, seeing it on our list. Not seeing it on. Not seeing it on the list. But here's what I am seeing on the list. Okay. I'm seeing the new Biden administration initiative to take on corporate mergers, landlord <laughs> junk fees, and food prices. I mean, like I told you, it's going to be a whole lot of whiplash coming your way. I think President Biden and the administration understands that one of the most pressing issues facing all Americans right now, regardless of your political background, are prices, are the way the economy was upended in a post-COVID world, and they are working to counter high prices. And we have seen now inflation come down drastically to the lowest levels in years, thanks to the actions that the administration has taken. And I think the COVID pandemic and the fallout from the pandemic has really exposed a lot of the weaknesses in our system. And President Biden is making an important point to say, listen, I support capitalism. I am a capitalist, but capitalism without competition is just exploitation. And so he is looking at these companies that have basically amassed these monopolies, controlling the entire food supply, controlling the entire airline industry. And he is trying to figure out ways with his administration, with the federal government to try to figure out, OK, how could we prevent all these companies, these big companies from basically buying out every smaller company and then just becoming a full on monopoly, having complete price control over the entire economy. And then when something happens like COVID, they take advantage of the American people and they all raise prices in unison and they screw over working Americans. So President Biden here is working on that. And here's a quote from him. He says, Bidenomics is about increasing competition, not stifling competition. When companies have to compete, it means lower prices, fair wages, and more innovation. I think that is a smart way to frame this. And if you truly do believe in capitalism, you should believe in actual competition between companies because that is the whole point. And it is important that the federal government ensure that there is that competition and that there is not this just unfettered, exploitative capitalism that we are seeing run amok in the country. A big initiative from President Biden. And this is something that, once again, Donald Trump gave a lot of word salad to. America, we're going to make everything in America. Made in America, made in America. Then you look at the guy's hats and the guy's hats are made in where? The guy's hats are made in China and Bangladesh and Vietnam. 
Trump is a total fraud, but President Biden actually taking it seriously. He is requiring Made in America products when using federal funding to rebuild infrastructure. And as we had reported on in a previous show, analysts are now saying that America is going through what is called a manufacturing super cycle. And we are just at the beginning stages of that manufacturing super cycle with spending on infrastructure like three times what it was in 2016 as a result of the Infrastructure Act, as a result of the Inflation Reduction Act. President Biden going out there on the campaign. He did that great ad. We won't play it now, but I think everybody saw it. We were speaking on the last episode about uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and her comments when she was like, and President Biden, he wants to do what FDR did, and he wants to do what Lyndon B. Johnson did, and he wants to give you health care. And he wants to protect your social security and get mosquito. You education. And we were get like, out of here, mosquito. we were like, is she campaigning for Biden? <laughs> what is happening? And I think the Biden campaign was listening because they quickly cut a in, an incredible ad that used Marjorie Taylor Greene's words against her and used it as a promotion for Bidenomics, a promotion for the Biden agenda. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant messaging. Look quite like a Midas ad, if I don't, if I do say so myself. President Biden had fun with that today as well. President Biden took a tour at the Philly shipyard. He attended a steel cutting ceremony to mark the construction of a new offshore wind vessel earlier in the day. He spoke before a crowd of union workers to discuss the administration's efforts to boost clean energy manufacturing and create union jobs. So you have President Biden out there trying to thread the needle right now because the whole Republican mindset is, oh, these clean jobs, they're going to take away manufacturing, right? They're going to take away all these jobs that people have had for a long time. In fact, it's the opposite. It's these clean energy jobs that are actually the jobs of the future. And it's important that people in manufacturing are able to get these clean energy jobs, which are now coming to America in record numbers. So Biden appeared today at the Philly shipyard. He did a speech to highlight the progress under this Made in America Bidenomics agenda. He was with a thousand workers across nine labor unions set to build power generators with steel plates produced by United States steelworkers in Indiana. And that's the thing that you see Biden right now. Whenever he's out there, you see President Biden there and he's around men and women in hard hats. He's around union workers. He's constantly touting the accomplishments of working Americans, the importance of lowering costs, the importance of people being able to afford to live, afford, afford, get affordable health care. And he's actually speaking to your point, Jordy. He's actually he's not talking about Barbie. He's talking about the struggles that people have on a daily basis. Here's a stat for you. Since 2021, investments in the U.S. offshore wind, in, wind industry have quadrupled from $5 billion to $21.6 billion, including another $7.7 billion since President Biden signed the Inflation Reduction Act that same year. So we are seeing record investments right now. And we are just going to right now start to see the results of this infrastructure. But America is about to go through a manufacturing boom, and it's become the envy of the world. You have countries mm -hmm. like Japan and South Korea who are looking to America as a place to now go, oh, we need to open up businesses there. They have a great business climate. How, how are they kicking our ass? And that is something that is completely new. President Biden today, he was still having fun with the Marjorie Taylor Greene stuff. He made a point to make a comment uh, about her supporting her agenda uh, that I thought was pretty funny. I'll play you this Biden clip talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene in front of the union workers now. As you may have seen, apparently 40 million people watched. Marjorie Taylor Greene, the very conservative gentle lady from the state of Georgia, said Biden is doing things like Roosevelt and, and, and it goes on the line as if it created these jobs, and he thinks that, I thought that was, I never had an endorsement from him before. I never had an endorsement from her before. Wait, are those bad things? I don't even understand. Uh, President Biden out there uh, touting the unemployment numbers. He notes, to the surprise of a lot of economists, uh, unemployment's down, and so is inflation. Play the clip. And our plan's working, Bidenomics. 
We're here. And here's what it looks like. For 13 million new jobs built across the country, nearly half a million of them here in Pennsylvania, just in the last two and a half years. 800,000 manufacturing jobs, 28,000 here in Pennsylvania alone in the last two and a half years. That's more jobs in two years than any president has created in a four-year term. Unemployment is below 4 percent, the longest stretch of unemployment below 4 percent in the last 50 years. We're beginning to come back, folks, we can because we're giving workers a chance. Unemployment's down, but to the surprise of a lot of economists, so is inflation. Remember the story? In order for inflation to come down, you've got to cut wages for hardworking folks. You've got to have unemployment up in order for inflation to come down. Well, guess what? I never bought that. I don't think the problem in America is too many people are working or the people are making too much money. Instead, we focused on getting Americans into the workforce by fixing a broken supply chain, lowering the cost of product from everything from health care to the products we purchase. And these economists will never have one day of afterthought or reckoning after consistently for the past couple of years saying a recession's coming, a recession's coming. And in fact, we've actually only seen incredible job growth. We've seen revisions upward in past reports. We've seen revisions for the future uh, also raised as far as predictions for our GDP. Now all the analysts are saying that we're actually about to experience a major boom and that the economy is actually doing quite well. Biden also spoke about the administration investing in union apprenticeship programs like the one at the Philly shipyard. It offers workers an opportunity to one day earn $100,000 a year without a college degree. And you see with these polls now that show these hypothetical matchups between President Biden and, and Trump, and I, I do hate polls, but this Quinnipiac poll is a fairly legitimate poll, so I thought it is worth bringing up. And in this poll, Biden leads Trump by by a five point spread, which we should note is slightly higher than the 4.5 point spread that there was in the 2020 election. But beyond that, one of the things that uh, you know I, I noticed in this poll as well is the number one issue across party lines, independents, Democrats also the most important thing, protecting our democracy. And that's what we were speaking about earlier in this episode. And that's what we have been saying really since day one of this podcast. It's a message that President Biden has been pushing for a long time, even when everybody said, what, what, what do you, what do you, why are they talking about that? Why, why, why aren't they talking about this or that or crime or inflate, whatever? <laughs> President Biden understood the assignment, and I think the American people are seeing what is going on, Jordy, to your point, when you see President Biden speaking about what people need and when you see Ted Cruz talking about Barbie, uh, the differences could not be clearer. I yep. uh, want, wanted to highlight also uh, the Democrats uh, reintroduced in the Senate reintroduced the Freedom to Vote Act this week. Um, you know, obviously we don't control the House, but I think that's just an important show of priorities and the differences in priorities that we are seeing. But you see, when Democrats do control the government, the power that they're able to have and the good they're actually able to do when they actually control state legislatures. And we're seeing that especially, I want to give a huge shout out to Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who has been a trailblazer, an absolute trailblazer with this. She signed various bills into law this week, including bills that carry out a constitutional amendment that voters had approved that require at least nine days of early voting in future elections, expansions to absentee voting and community ballot drop boxes and the creation of a web-based tracking system for absentee ballots. She signed legislation to ensure Michiganders can continue to access affordable health insurance under the Healthy Michigan Plan and make it easier for them to get the care and treatment they need with lower costs. She also signed this historic education budget that will provide universal free school meals to 1.4 million students in the state. It includes $160 million for free breakfast and lunch for pre-K to grade 12 students. The budget largely prioritized investments in Michigan K through 12 schools, starting with the largest ever per pupil allocation at $9,608 per student, a 400 
$58 increase from the year prior. So I think you saw the chaos of the Republican Party. I think you see the Democrats, at least while, while you could disagree with them on a lot of issues, you see that their heads and their hearts are in the right place here. You see just the differences between actual leaders who want to play to people's best qualities, who want to play to hope, who want to play for the things that we all actually care about, the things that we need to live healthy and prosperous and productive lives versus the people who just want to tear down this country, the people who want to just put out all this toxicity into the ecosystem, who just want to frankly, inflict pain on the American people because they think that it helps them win elections. And to me, the contrast could not be clearer. On that note, I want to thank everybody for joining us for this episode of the Midas Touch Podcast. Great episode, brothers. I think we covered a whole lot. And better set that alarm early because we're on indictment watch. It could happen at any time. Remember, Jay, you got to call me multiple times. if it Don't happens. put your phone on snooze or do not disturb. Don't do that. Jordy, I, I, I need my rest. I, I need my Did rest. Did you know this fun fact, Brett? What do you Michigander, got? Michiganian are unofficial demonyms for natives and residents of the United States, of the state of Michigan. You could use both. And less common alternatives include Michiganer, Michiganite, Michiganese, Michigan, and Michigoose. Michigoose. I, like, I quite like Michigoose. And to all the people in the comments saying, Brett, go all out shave your head completely, go bald. It will definitely happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You guys got to chill. All right. You guys, you guys got to chill on those suggestions. I'm sorry. I love y'all, but, <laughs> but that's not going, but that's not going down. You know, no, I checked, I checked the calendar. I checked the calendar fellas about 473 days, six hours, 23 minutes, actually now 22 minutes, six hours, 22 minutes, 473 days until the election. And so what that means is and if everybody who's watching this can just do a little bit each and every day to spread the word about this network, to spread the word about making sure people are registered to vote, start now. Now is the best time to start. The only time that was better was yesterday. But if you didn't, start right now because just think about what we can accomplish together in 473 days with the power of the Midas Mighty, with all everybody in the community, with the millions of people who watch and listen to these shows, if we're just talking to one or two new people a day, just set that as a goal. Think about the exponential effect that that has. That's the difference maker. Like, just think about it. Like, we could all be the difference right now in saving our democracy right now, this community right here. Thanks to all of you, all the might is mighty. And so from the bottom of our heart, honestly, thank you so, so much. We appreciate you. Um, for everybody who's got the memberships to the YouTube, thank you. Don't worry if you couldn't do it. But if you can get other people memberships, you can buy memberships for other people. I'd love to see everybody be a member of our YouTube. Brett and Jordy, as soon as we end this, you know what I'm going to tell you? We got to set up our Patreon live yes. meeting for the next, within the next seven days, I want to hold our Zoom meeting. So we're going to talk about that as soon as the show ends. So make sure you become a member of patreon.com slash Midas Touch so you can meet us on the Zoom. There's also a great membership on Patreon where you can uh, be an honorary producer of the show. Let's and go. that goes a long way. Your name appears at the end of the show to the Midas Mo Mighty Anthem, and it goes a long way to help as well. So consider joining Patreon. It's different than the YouTube, but both have kind of great things. And so just look for what the memberships are. But it explains it when you when you click it. Go to store.midastouch.com for the best pro-democracy gear, 100% made in the U.S., 100% union made. We got some great Midas Touch gear. You're going to love our shirts and sweatshirts and hats and everything we have. Um, so go to store.midastouch.com. And I want to give a special thanks to all of our sponsors. Check them out in the description. And it's a great way to support our network as well. And also wherever on social media you use, you know, if you tag some of these sponsors and say, hey, I heard about you on the Midas Touch Network, 
that's always a good thing. The sponsors like that. Um, so you can, you can do that as well. But again, thank you so much. Great episode. I love spending the time with all of you, Midas Mighty out there. This, this whole move, none of this is possible without you. And we are just so fortunate to be a part of this movement with you. So from the bottom of all of our hearts, thank you so much. Jordy, take it away. Shout out to the Midas Mighty. The Midas. At Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro-democracy, and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right, gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com.